This week on Life on Jupiter, we'll show you the tips, tricks and techniques for locking through the Erie Canal on America's Great Loop. Shake it, it's got to fly, shake it up. Last week at the week's before. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks. Thank you. We're good. We're good, B. B, you're on the cool, cool high. I should be out there driving. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Yay! Huh? Oops. There's the traffic. You go backwards? So we are in the Erie Canal. 36 locks, sometimes I say 35, but anyway, one's a double lock, so it's actually a total of 36 locks. On the 360 odd miles of canal. So let's get back to basics. What is a lock? So a lock is a big concrete chamber with doors on either end, big barn doors that open and close and it is to enable a boat to enter and then change the water level either up or down everyone knows about the Panama Canal it has a series of locks I think it's only got five or six lock that's because the Atlantic and the Pacific are at different heights so a lock or a series of locks is used to move a vessel up or down to climb over a mountain range so the Erie Canal is nearly 400 miles long. Currently has 36 locks, but in the day, back 200 years ago, when they started construction, it had over 80 locks. And it was made as a connection between the Great Lakes, the Mideast, and New York, the Atlantic Ocean. The locks were required because of the change of water levels, the change of elevation over the Appalachian Mountains. So if we look on this, uh, this is a great map of the New York State Canal System. And it's got a canal profile here. And from Albany, that the first lock is the Troy US lock, and it climbs only 14 feet. It's the, one of the smallest locks. 
but then there is a quick succession the next five locks uh, climbing an average of 34 feet each and ultimately you are locking up up until Utica a total height of 420 feet higher than when you started at Albany there's two down locks and then again oh, one more down lock after Lake Unida at Lock Port where you're climbing a total of 50 feet up to Niagara River and Lake Erie I'll meet you guys at the guard gate too, all right? All right. Guard gate one is up. Oh, what do we do there? This is our first time up here. No, you just got your... Okay. You're not going to relax. You're going to lift it up in the air. Yeah. The other one is down, so I'm going to leave it up. Yeah. Right. yeah. Thank you. First dance? Yeah. yeah. All right. I'll come for you to ask your first time. Oh, okay. okay. Master E6 for giving me flowers. <laughs> so sweet. Nice welcome. <laughs> nice flowers. I bought you roses yesterday. Yeah. I'm not sure I like other guys giving you flowers. Is it okay to put it together? Yeah, why not? So that bridge can lift a little bit? Yeah, it's a gate. It's, it's a, a gate. to block the river. To oh. restrict the flow of the river. Okay. They lower that down, you know, to stop the flow mm. a little bit. So the Erie Canal is, it joins the Great Lakes to the Hudson River, basically it joins the Great Lakes to the Atlantic Ocean. It was an amazing feat of engineering and construction began about 200 years ago. It was built to carry barges pulled by oxen each side of the bank. Oxen would pull these barges through carrying timber, furs, minerals through to New York. These days, the Erie Canal is only used for pleasure boating and they've still maintain it and keep it open. Normally there's a fee for passing through the locks, but when we went through, it's free. So the procedure for entering a lock is pretty straightforward and initially a little intimidating, but once you've got one or two under your belt, no problems at all. Radio the lockmaster or telephone if you want to there are publications out there with the phone numbers for each lock but VHF radio and tell him you're approaching and that you want to request lockage request passage you are westbound in our case he'll tell you uh, any delays etc near the gate of each lock there is a traffic light Signal light, a red and a green. A red means do not proceed, a green means you can enter the lock. Pretty easy. If you can't raise him on the VHF or the telephone, uh, you can just toot your horn three times and surely something will happen. As you are entering the lock, there is often a reverse current because at each lock there is a dam of some sort. So there's often a lot of current and as you approach the lock, there's a reverse current coming into the lock like an eddy and sometimes that can shoot you into the lock too quickly so be careful of your speed also uh, in the entrance of the lock is often because it's a calm area logs gather so be careful of your propellers we often had to slow right down and then just drift in 
and push them out of the way with the boat hook. Wow. So take your time coming into the lock. Don't come in too fast. There's two or three different types of connecting yourself to the lock wall. Uh, Federal lock, the first one, had poles. And uh, they were too far apart for us to get a bow and stern line. So we just took a middle line, as the lock master advised us. And the rope would then slide up the pole because we're locking up. Obviously, if we're locking down, the rope would slide down. And you need to man that rope all the time in case it gets caught on something. And sometimes they do. They get caught around and you have to give slack so that it drops down or, dro or slides up. You need to adjust the tension. Another style of connecting point that we found was simply ropes hanging from the top of the lock down with a weight attached to the bottom, usually a lump of rubber. Sometimes they were a lump of steel, like a, a steel ring, just a weight to hold it down. Um, so these slippery, slimy ropes, you just simply hold, or you wrap the bottom end of it around a horn cleat, and then you pull through the slack. We didn't love those type because when the lock is filling with water, it can be turbulent, depending on how fast the lock master is flooding the chamber. Here comes the water. But it can be turbulent and suddenly the boat's getting pushed away from the wall and you're desperately trying to hold this rope um, and pull in the slack at the same time. A couple of times, I was worried we were going to touch because we got a, a you know a wide boat and we got the mast which is long and we were facing diagonally across the the uh, lock chamber. If you are having trouble holding the boat, radio the lock master, which is hard because you're busy holding a rope. You can't run off to the radio, but tell him slow down. We are having trouble holding the boat. He'll be watching anyway, but you know. Sometimes they need prompting to uh, just slow the process down. First lock of the day, our second day on the canal, and we got to uh, we got to get some miles. <laughs> we did six canal, uh, sorry, six locks yesterday, but they were all really close together. It sort of wears you out a bit, the stress of it all. But we're getting better at it now. And uh, yeah, we just friend of ours in uh, Lake Michigan. He said. Uh, because we said we're going to be there around September. And he says, ooh, it gets cold in September. So we want to get going. we got to get it. So it's August today, 1st of August. We got to, uh, we want to be in Chicago in a month. So I did work it out. Six, uh, we got about um, 1,200 miles to do. So yeah. Got to do some miles today. And these locks, we'll get three locks done today and um, it'll be at least 30 miles we get done. This is our guidebook.
<laughs> Same here. Did you hear that? He's watching our video. Really? That's what he said? Yep. B. I think it's gonna rain. Yeah, me too, Big. Should we stop? Well, I'm gonna have to stop just because it's raining. But uh, it doesn't look as bad. As, it was looking darker before. It's less dark now. So I think it might just be some drizzle. Really? Famous last words. <laughs> we'll, we'll, I'll keep going. Uh, would you mind getting my jacket and plastic pants? Put away all this stuff. So there's a few new disciplines and a few new skills that you need to know on the river, I guess, which we're learning slowly. Bridges, obviously not much problem for us anymore. Apart from the uh, like the railroad bridges, the, the big old steel bridges, they are. Um, very magnetic and the autopilot is going <laughs> into the riverbank when you go under them so just watch out for the autopilot doing strange things depths well we're on the Mohawk River now so the Hudson was mostly in fact the Hudson was mostly 10 meters or more where's that mark Gone. What mark is it? That raises another subject I'll bring up in a minute. Yeah, so depths uh, so far, yeah. Hudson, no problems, although we did run aground there. Because there's a the shallow bank that was indicated on the chart, it was supposed to be three meters of water. And it wasn't, it was about one. It's a river, it's constantly changing, you know, it's hard to keep those depths accurate. And so far in the Mohawk, we sit on about three meters. Um, what I was about to bring up before, attention. So much harder work <laughs> because you have to pay attention. It's only a matter of 30 seconds to each side of the bank, you know, I mean, uh, 
it's a lot more draining I guess than uh, sailing out at sea uh, because at sea you've got very little to hit but here you've got constant turning corners on the river just before I ventured outside the marked channel into uh, with just one meter or three feet underneath the rudders I went oh shit not paying attention so you gotta it's a bit tiring actually yeah I must have pressed the minus 10 instead of the minus one Pay attention! This looks like one of those free wharves. Maybe. Nice park. Well, it's not private, uh, it looks public. So we got rain coming. <coughs> Been watching the, the, the radar, the, wet, the uh, internet weather radar. And it's probably two hours away from us, a big rainstorm. I don't know if we want to tie up, do we? We could. How did you know it's free? There are a lot of free, free uh, docks on this canal. Unless there's signs, I think you can assume it's free. What do you reckon? Do you want to tie up here? Yeah. I think we could stop. You can see the rain coming. We're actually, it's pretty close. Let's tie up now. Things are going to get wet. Let's move, B. Lock up. Get stuff inside, please. The rain is coming. Just in time. We were glad to be tied up securely and hunkered down for a cold, wet evening. However, it wasn't long before a rain-jacketed staff member came knocking on the hull, asking for payment for the dock. We apologize for the inconvenience and we let go the lines to go drop the anchor instead. But that didn't go as planned either. Big time. 
Big time. Big time dragging. Yeah, what are we gonna do now? Uh, let's pick it up, try somewhere else. Well, there's another lesson learnt. You can't set the anchor into river rock, but we're thankful to have the Raymarine Down Vision Depth Transducer. No, we are not sponsored. Yet. But at least we can see what sort of bottom we're ploughing into. Uh, allow me to rephrase that. You don't want to bury your anchor into rock. You really want to bury it deep into a soft bottom. Oh, damn it. So we've parked up for the night in Little Falls. Join us next week on the Erie Canal and we'll tell you where you can tie up for free.